Hello and welcome to another video. So this is a quadratic equation problem and you're supposed to figure out what the values of k will be so that this quadratic equation will have no real solutions or will have exactly one solution or will have equal roots, okay? The roots are the same thing as a solution, okay? Um, by the way, just so I can get this out of the way, B and C mean exactly the same thing. It means when you find your value of X in this quadratic equation, so the first X, you know how you're supposed to get two answers. So it's going to be X equals, say, 4. And then the next X you get will be X equals 4. So that means that the, the roots are equal. And it's the same thing as it has exactly one solution because it's 4, only 4 you're getting. Okay, so that's what it means. So I want you to uh, look at this question again and see that we only have two problems to solve. The first one is when there are no real solutions and the second one is when there's only one solution because this and this mean exactly the same thing. Okay, I put that there because that might confuse some people but now that's out of the way. Now let's deal with the first two because the third is as the second. <laughs> okay, now, so Right now, we want to find the values of k when there are no real solutions. Do not look for any strategies. The answer to any kind of, any question that looks like this is in the formula for the quadratic um, equation, which is the quadratic formula. So I'm going to start and then show you where you find the answers to these. Okay, so for any, for any quadratic equation, ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, we can tell that x is equal to plus, is, um, is minus b, let's start with that, is minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Okay, now because we're dealing with natural, um, we're dealing with integers and real numbers, okay, that's what I wanted to say. Because we're dealing with real numbers, all of these operations can be performed, you can, I mean, not all, but you can actually take the negative of any number. That's easy. There's no problem. There will never be a problem with you changing the sign on a number. This, there will never be a problem with you multiplying any number by two. The big problem is that there might be a problem taking the square root of a number if you want the number to be real. Remember that you can only take the square root of positive numbers okay you can only take the square root of positive numbers if you want to keep getting real numbers okay so but if you end up with a negative under the square root sign whatever you get from here will not be real it will be complex to be a complex number with imaginary parts so you're going to have imaginary numbers popping up from here if it ends up being negative so we can come to certain conclusions that if you're going to have real roots, okay, if you're going to have real roots, you must get a positive here, which means that b squared minus 4ac must be greater than zero. Or some people say b squared must be, b squared minus 4ac must be greater than zero, or b squared must be greater than 4ac so that you can subtract it from it. So however you like to remember that, just know it, that this part of this equation is what determines the characteristic of the number and type of solution. And that's why this part is called the discriminant. So we call this discriminant. Is this part is b squared minus 4ac. And in some books, it is denoted as d. They write it this way, it's capital D. Okay, so the determinant must be positive if you're gonna get real answers. If the determinant is negative, you're gonna start getting answers that are not real and it's gonna provide you the answer to A. So let's look at the conditions for A. If there are no real solutions, then we say B squared minus four AC is negative. So you can say B squared minus 4ac equals negative. So you can say negative or you say is less than zero. 
okay? Remember, that's it. If a number is negative, then it's less than zero. So that's what happens, and that's what you need. So let's go back to the quadratic equation and identify what A is, what C is, and what B is. Right now, this is our B. I'm going to write B here. This line here is B. I mean, square root of 2K. This is our A, and this is our C. So we can go in here and plug in those numbers and see what we're going to get. So B squared will be 2K, right, 2K squared, minus 4 times A. What is A? A is 3. And what is C? C is 6. It's less than 0. So that tells us that if you square this, you're going to get 2K minus, this is 12 times, that's 72 is less than 0. I can divide through by 2 and I get k minus 36 is less than 0. So if I isolate k, k is strictly less than 36. So any number that is less than 36 will give you a negative deter de discriminate, discriminant rather, okay? And once that happens, you're not going to get a real solution because you'll be taking the square root of a negative number which will be giving you imaginary parts. Okay, so that's the solution to that. It's when k is less than 36. So let's look at the second condition, b. So the second condition says um, when there is only one solution. And remember I explained it means that the answer you get for the two parts, remember when you come to the formula here, this is where you get the two parts. That's the origin of the two parts minus b plus this, and minus b minus this. So you start wondering, why would those two ever be the same if I am adding at some point and subtracting at some point? What number would be here so that if I add it to the same thing, look at this, if I say b minus b plus something, is the same thing as minus b minus something. What could this something be such that it doesn't change my negative b? That something must be nothing. I mean zero. That's what I meant. So for you to have both answers the same, ending up with the same answer for this and this, which means you have only one solution, it means what you're adding from here is a zero. And for you to get a zero here, it means what's in here is a zero. The discriminant will give you a zero. So we can go back here and write that the condition for you to have only one solution. So if there is only one root, okay, or is either we say one root or equal roots. That's another way to say it. Only one root or equal roots. It simply means that the discriminant gives us a zero because that's when we're going to get a zero here. Okay, and that's what we're going to use here. Then we can say that b squared minus 4ac is equal to zero. Okay, so now what is b squared? Well, we're able to figure b squared out. That's going to be 2k minus what is 4ac we ended up with 72 equals 0 we can now say that um, 2k equals 72 and k equals 36 so if k is 36 you're going to get only one root and when you sketch the curve of this um, parabola because that's what it is it's going to be something like this uh, when k i don't know what the solution is but whatever that solution is of this it's going to be Let's say this is the solution. It's going to be a graph that touches like that. It's going to be something like that. Okay. Now, where this point is located, I'm not sure. I didn't bother solving it, but that's the meaning of it. It's just going to be tangential to it, to the x-axis, and that's what's going to be. Okay, so um, that's the solution to these three questions. Remember, C and B are the same thing. That's why I wrote both of them in this one. I'll see you in the next video. Don't stop learning, because those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.